Hello, welcome to the next lesson in our fraction series where today we are learning to order fractions with different denominators and to compare them to see which are larger and which are smaller. Comparing and ordering fractions that have the same denominator is relatively simple. Because they all have the same denominator, we don't have to order them, they're all the same. We just need to look at the numerators to see which are larger and which are smaller. And we can see here that 1 eighth is the smallest, followed by 2 eighths. The next largest is 3 eighths. The next is 5 eighths. The next largest is 6 eighths. And the largest fraction is 7 eighths. So ordering fractions with the same denominator is very simple. But what do you do when they have different denominators? How can you find out which is the largest or the smallest fraction here? What we have to do is to look at the denominators and we must find the lowest common multiple of each denominator. What that means is that we must look for a number that in this case appears in both the six times table and the nine times table. Let's have a look at how we do that. We need to know our six times tables and our nine times tables or be able to find our maths mat or maths book with which we can look up the tables. Now when we look at the six times table we see a series of numbers 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48 and 54. And if we look at the nine times table we see these numbers 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72 and 81. Now what we are looking for are numbers that appear in both of these tables. Now let's have a look. We can see that 18 appears in both of these tables and we can see that 36 also appears in these tables. Can you find another number that appears in these tables? That's right, 54 appears in both the 6 and the 9 times tables. So there are three common multiples. Now we want to find the lowest common multiple because remember if we can find a low number it's usually much easier to work with than a higher number. So the lowest common multiple here is 18. Now we can use this. We have to convert the previous fraction so that they have the same lowest common multiple. That is so that their denominator is the same. So how do we do this? Remember that the lowest common multiple for 6 and 9 was 18. So to convert 4 sixths so that the denominator is 18, we must multiply the denominator by 3. This means that we also multiply the numerator by 3 because what we multiply the numerator with, we must also multiply the denominator with. This gives us a new fraction, 12 eighteenths. Now let's convert the other fraction, which was 3 ninths. Now remember, the lowest common multiple was 18. So we have to multiply this denominator by 2 and we multiply the numerator by 3. I beg your pardon, we multiply the numerator by 2 to give us 6 eighteenths. Now we can compare these 
fractions. We had to compare 3 ninths and 4 sixths. So we converted them into equivalent fractions. So we can see that 3 ninths is the same as 6 eighteenths and 4 sixths is equivalent to 12 eighteenths. The top two fractions we could not compare because they had different denominators. And we converted these fractions so we found the lowest common multiple which was 18 and then we converted them so that they shared the same denominator. And this means that we can now compare these fractions. We can see that 6 eighteenths is smaller than 12 eighteenths. So we can see that 3 ninths is indeed a smaller fraction than 4 sixths. And this is the correct order for them. Now it's your go. You'll need a pen and paper to help you find the lowest common multiple of these fractions. Then you'll have to order them from lowest to highest. Remember all of these fractions will share a common multiple. So you'll have to look at your 6, 8, 4 and 3 times tables to find which number or numbers appear in all of those. Then you'll have to find the lowest one. Then you will have to find the equivalent fraction and order them so that they all have the same denominator. This may be quite difficult, so if you need to go back to the beginning of the slide and have a look again, by all means go ahead. Now you'll need to submit your answers via Edmodo. So good luck, and remember if you're stuck, rewind the video so you can have another look. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.